Hello friends, welcome to this module on demyelinating diseases. Uh, in the last module, we had read exclusively about multiple sclerosis. And other than multiple sclerosis also, we have some different demyelinating diseases. That will be the topic of discussion in uh, this module. Okay. So what actually is ADEM? ADEM basically stands for Acute Disseminated Encephalomyelitis. Okay. There are certain differentiating features from multiple sclerosis. There are certain differentiating features from multiple sclerosis. ADEM is mostly disease of children. Whereas we had read MS is seen in age group of 20 to 50 years. This has a prodrome. MS does not have a prodrome. By prodrome, I mean that it is usually triggered. It is post-viral. That is infectious. Or post-vaccination. Okay. Adam usually has a explosive onset MS does not have an explosive onset it is a relapsing remitting type ADEM is usually monophasic this can be relapsing remitting can be secondary progressive MS can be primary progressive MS right but ADEM is usually monophasic Fifth point, there is simultaneous involvement of gray and white matter in Adam. Whereas in MS, you have white matter involvement. Okay, you have white matter involvement. Again, in ADEM, you have certain features like fever, seizures, altered mental status, that is encephalopathy. These features are not present in multiple sclerosis. Another point, OCB is present in 90% of patients of MS. OCB is usually absent in ADEM. This shows pleocytosis more than around 200 cells. This shows less number of cells in CSF somewhere less than 50 to 75. It will show markedly increased protein. The protein is mildly raised in MS. Okay? So these are the important differences that you should know between ADEM and MS. ADEM is most commonly seen in children. This is important. This is seen in the age group of 20 to 50 years. Although we have an entity known as pediatric MS, but that is a different topic of discussion, which we are not discussing it here, right? And the most important part is it is a triggered. It can be post-viral or post-vaccination. So, which is the most common infection that gives rise to ADEM? Previously it was measles, but now the most common infection is varicella. So, if you get uh, the option of uh, measles in your exam and there is uh, no other option of varicella, then in that case you should be mar marking 
measles. But if you get varicella in your option, then the most common infectious cause of edema is varicella at present. Now, how you treat these patients? You give steroids. Steroids are the treatment of choice. Now, as I mentioned, ADEM is mostly monophasic. Is mostly monophasic. If you have a recurrence or a relapse, then you should check an antibody in serum known as myelin oligodendrocyte glyoprotein, which is basically the MOG antibody. Okay. You should check for MOG antibody in those patients who have recurrence of ADEM. Now, one thing I would like to say about uh, this uh, MOG antibody is that the presentation is very similar to NMO spectrum disorder. Like they also have optic neuritis which can be bilateral, they can have myelitis. Now, one thing I told you in the module of multiple sclerosis is that uh, whenever you have optic neuritis in a patient of multiple sclerosis, the doctor sees nothing, patient also sees nothing. That means the fundus is normal. But in MOG antibody, fundus shows papilledema. Fundus shows papilledema. So this is a important MCQ like which demyelinating disease presents with papilledema as a finding in its optic neuritic presentation. So the answer would be MOG antibody. So remember this important piece of information from uh, ADEM and MOG. Right. Now, next we shall come over to NMO spectrum disorder. NMO spectrum disorder are another group of demyelinating diseases and it's a very devastating illness. It is also known as Davick's disease. Also known as Davick's disease and it's a very devastating illness. It's a very devastating illness. That means the disability is uh, very high as compared to multiple sclerosis and it is strongly female preponderant which ratio of 9 is to 1. Right. The classical features of NMO spectrum disorders are optic neuritis and myelitis. Now what is the characteristic of myelitis in NMO spectrum disorder, this is LETM, which means longitudinally extensive transverse myelitis. Longitudinally extensive transverse myelitis. So, suppose if this is the vertebra and this is the cord, this is the vertebra and this is the cord. So, a patient of multiple sclerosis shall have this much involvement, whereas a patient of NMO spectrum disorder will have this much involvement. What I am trying to show here is, here almost 1 to 2 segments of vertebra involved, but here more than 3 segments of vertebra are involved. So, this is known as longitudinally extensive transverse myelitis where more than three vertebral segments are involved. What is the characteristic of optic neuritis in NMO spectrum? It is bilateral. You present, they present with bilateral optic neuritis. Now, this is a table from Harrison which mentions about the Diagnostic criteria for NMO spectrum disorder. In the module of multiple sclerosis, I have told you that the diagnostic criteria for multiple sclerosis is known as the McDonald's criteria. NMO spectrum disorder have the criteria name known as the Wingerchuk criteria. It is the criteria that has been given by Wingerchuk. So it is the Wingerchuk criteria. Now, what is important in NMO spectrum disorder is they have an antibody that is positive in their serum which is known as the aquaporin 4. 
So you had to remember that there is an antibody that is positive in their serum known as the aquaporin 4 antibodies. Right. Apart from optic neuritis and transverse myelitis, they have certain other important features also that have been added into their core clinical features. Now what are they? We have already discussed about the optic neuritis, we have discussed about the acute myelitis. Apart from that, they have a presentation known as area pestrema syndrome. So you can have a question that can be framed in such a way that a 30 year female patient has been complaining of vomiting acute onset from last 2 to 3 weeks. She has done a gastroenterologist consultation and an upper GI endoscopy has been done which turned out to be normal. Someone sought a neurology consultation for this patient. What will you suspect? So what will you suspect? So a female patient with a vomiting, you can have stroke like symptoms also but you can have to consider area posthumous syndrome. Area posthumous syndrome is uh, presents like unexplained hiccups and nausea vomiting. So this can be your clinic based question. So keep this in mind. If you have an area posthumous syndrome, think of NMO spectrum disorder. Then you can have something known as a symptomatic narcolepsy. Something known as a symptomatic narcolepsy where the patient would present with recurrent falls. Patient would fail, uh, present with recurrent falls. So in that case also, you have to think of NMO spectrum disorder, right? Now, one more important thing that you need to know about uh, NMOSD is the involvement of chiasma. The involvement of chiasma. This is the visual pathway, right? Where you have the optic nerve, it becomes the uh, goes to the chiasma, becomes the optic tract, then you have the radiations and finally it goes to the cortex. But this part, this part is known as the chiasma. This part is known as the chiasma, right? Anterior to that we have the anterior visual pathway and posterior to that we have the posterior visual pathway. So anterior visual pathway is affected in MOG antibody diseases. MOG antibody diseases, whereas NMO spectrum disorder classically involves the optic chiasma. So this is an important MCQ. If you have to remember two to three lines out of NMO spectrum disorder, one would be this line that which demyelinating disease affects the optic chiasma answer would be NMO spectrum disorder. So please do not forget this important piece of information that which demyelinating disease affects the uh, optic chiasma answer would be NMO spectrum disorder. Right. Now, in the exam now people are getting lot of image based questions. Right. So someone who presents with uh, area posthuma syndrome would like to have this type of imaging finding. This was the diencephalic syndrome that we have with NMO spectrum disorder that we have with NMO spectrum disorder, you can see the diencephalon is affected, right? And here the area in around the fourth ventricle and the area posthuma is affected. This is presenting with area posthuma syndrome. This is presenting with area posthuma syndrome, right? So this is also an important imaging feature of NMO spectrum where you have the involvement of the ventricles in and around the ventricles that is the periventricular area periependymal surface of the ventricle is affected periependymal surface of the ventricles is affected so to summarize what is nmo spectrum disorder the criteria name is wingerchuk criteria right also known as devix disease third it is a very devastating illness it has got maximum disability more common in females, right? And you have to remember two classical core features of this disease that is optic neuritis which is bilateral and the myelitis that is the spinal cord involvement which is longitudinally extensive. That means longitudinally extensive there is involvement of more than three vertebras. And along with that you have to remember something known as the area posthuma syndrome, something known as the area posthuma syndrome where the patient will present with unexplained hiccups and vomiting right now how you are going to treat nmo spectrum disorder so just like multiple sclerosis this has 
a treatment for acute attack and this has got a preventive treatment where we give the immunomodulators. Now what are the drugs that we have for acute attack? We have glucocorticoids and we have plasma exchange. Since NMO spectrum is a very devastating illness, so what we do is we give plasma exchange. We give plasma exchange, right? So it is a treatment of choice for devastating NMO spectrum disorder, right? Now what are the preventive therapies that we have for NMO spectrum? One of them is rituximab. One of them is rituximab. It is the monoclonal antibody against CD20. Other drugs that are there in the offering, one of them is eculizumab, sertralizumab and inabilizumab. Inabilizumab is a monoclonal antibody against CD19. And eculizumab is a monoclonal antibody against complement 5. Whereas sertralizumab is a monoclonal antibody against IL-6. So any of these drugs and its mechanism action could be asked in your exam. So you have to remember rituximab acting against monoclonal antibody against 20, eculizumab acting against complement 5, sertralizumab IL-6 and inibilizumab against CD-19. What you have to remember is the side effect of eculizumab. Equilizumab has a potential to cause meningococcal infection. So it can cause meningococcal infection and rash. So equilizumab can cause meningococcal infection and rash. So prior to giving this drug, it must be make sure that the vaccination is complete with meningococcus. Right? So we come to an end of this uh, uh, module. And I would like to end with this image-based question. What is this image-based question? First, you have to identify what is this lesion? What is this lesion? Right. And the second question would be which DMT is responsible for such a lesion? So nowadays you are getting a lot of clinical based questions in your exam, which is integrated. It's like integrated stuff. So first and foremost, you have to identify that this is a vesicular rash in a dermatomal distribution. So this is herpes zoster. Now I'm asking you which DMT is responsible for such a rash. The answer is fingolimod. Answer is if you have read the module of multiple sclerosis that I have told you that fingolimod which is a sphingosin 1 receptor modulators they cause bradycardia as their side effect they cause macular edema and they cause uh, varicella infections so it is important that in such patients we uh, check the antibody against the varicella prior to starting of this therapy so you can get such questions in your exam, be prepared for it and uh, the answer to this question is fingolim mode and the rash is herpes zoster. Okay, thank you.